Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. I'm not the first one to say this, but I think the terms anime film and live action is kind of like putting water to oil. They just don't mix very well from a theoretical level. Like that shit's just not gonna happen no matter how hard you mix that son of a bitch. But sometimes, just sometimes, we witness a brief moment of God's work where something that should never have happened becomes a fantastic reality. In conventional English, we call such occurrences miracles. And when a higher being manages to perfectly mix the water and oil that is the live action anime film genre, we get a miraculously good mixture that we fail to believe exists on this planet. And well, we had a little thing that they announced earlier this year that is known as the Gintama live action film, which upon seeing that trailer and upon seeing that announcement, everybody just went... I mean, we've already seen examples of just absolutely horrible Shonen Jump live action adaptations. And even a movie that theoretically should have been an amazing film that managed to take a shit in the bathtub. And so when I saw this Gintama live action film sitting on the screen on my aeroplane seat, I just went, okay. This aeroplane ride was already pretty bumpy because of the turbulence. I just hope that by the end of the film, the plane just doesn't fucking plunge into the ocean from all the shame this film produces. And after a solid two hours, of sitting back and watching what I thought was going to be an absolutely horrible movie, I ended it by slowly putting my finger towards my chin and whispering to myself, that movie was fucking awesome. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Joey, did the altitude really fuck you up that badly? And no, look, my boys, I couldn't believe in myself either. But I can convincingly say this out loud to a public sphere right now that the Gintama live action movie is fucking awesome. There, I said it. I said it. But you might be asking yourself, how? How did a film which seemingly from the trailers looked like it was going to be the equivalent to that of a amateur cosplayer's film school project turn out to be such an awesome film? Well, hopefully in today's video, I'll be able to get to the bottom of that answer. So. Let's examine. Now firstly, for all of you who are watching this video and have no idea what Gintama even is, shame on you. I mean seriously, it's a tremendously popular comedy shonen series that's boasted like what, five to six anime series and countless anime films? If you've ever gone onto my anime list and looked up the top rated anime series, then you would have seen this series just dominate that list. But there's good reason to that. It's not just like the weebs and 4chan and Reddit are fulfilling a meme prophecy again. <laughs> Gintama is a massively successful Shonen Jump series that is both hilarious and exciting. Blending in what I think is a perfect combination of episodic comedy bits and lengthy, action-packed and thrilling battle Shonen story arcs. The series first gained notoriety in Japan thanks to author Sorachi Hideaki's cutting and sarcastic comedy, often making referential jokes to other Shonen Jump series and even making fun of itself as a Shonen Jump series. And with an array of so many goofy and lovable characters, it's no wonder so many people have loved this series in the past and present. I mean, I'm no different either. The one and only time that I've ever cosplayed at a convention was Anime Expo two years ago, and I went as Gintoki from Gintama. Because not only is he one of my favorite Shonen Jump characters, period, I, but I also think he's definitely one of the coolest characters to especially cosplay as a dude. Also, Gintoki's hair is basically my hair if it just turned white from all the stress that YouTube is offering me. So in other words, in a few years' time, I won't even have to wear a wig. Now, the live-action anime film centers mostly around what is known as the Benizakura arc, which is the first main story arc of the series. Now, don't worry, I won't go into the spoilers of this film in this video because it does focus mostly around the Benizakura arc, which is very easy to catch up on if you've never watched or read Gintama. So, I'd recommend you first go and read or watch the Benizakura, or at least up to the Benizakura arc, and then come back if you want to fully understand what I'm talking about. But if not, it's totally fine. I'll try and explain it for all of you who've perhaps never seen or watched Gintama before. But the biggest question on everybody else who has watched and read Gintama is probably something like... Joey, how did they manage to do the entire Benizakura arc in a span of two hours? That arc wasn't exactly short, and there are a lot of characters in that arc that play a very important role, but 
is okay with that because we've already established what kind of characters they are before the many chapters before the Benny Zakura arc. I know a lot of you are probably thinking that question if you're fans of Gintama because I was thinking the exact same thing before I started watching this movie and I had read the synopsis. Because the Benny Zakura arc doesn't start in the original manga until around chapter 88 and 89. Which by that time has not only introduced the main characters and his main posse, but the entire Shinsengumi squad and other really important characters like Katsura, Elizabeth, Otae, etc. So how did this movie manage to introduce all of these characters into the story without us getting confused by them when we hardly ever see them or talk about them before the Benny Zakura arc? Well, the solution is actually very simple if you think about it, but is also a solution that I think only something like the Gintama live-action movie can pull off successfully. They broke the fourth wall. See, the beginning of the film starts the exact same way as the manga and anime, where it shows off Gintoki and Shinpachi. Kagura gets a brief mention and introduction, but doesn't fully go into her introductory episode, probably because of time constraints. We then cut immediately to a screen that is like created in 3D CGI and is consisted of chibis of Gintoki, Shinpachi, and Kagura explaining that there isn't enough time to explain all the characters at this rate. And has the characters basically calling out to the audience to say that they're going to cut this movie because of time constraints. And that instead of going the normal chronological way, they're going to cut to an episode where it introduces all the other important characters that you are about to see in the Benny Zakura arc. Namely, Chapter 83's Rhinoceros Beetle story. The characters also go on to say that the audience is probably not going to have a problem with this sudden story cut because they are self-aware enough that they know the majority of people watch watching this film are pre-existing fans of the Gintama franchise and so they already know the main story of Gintama before it gets to the Benny Zakura arc. So they know that they essentially won't be missing any important parts of the story between the first episode where they introduce Gintoki and Shinpachi all the way up to the Benny Zakura arc because they've probably already read and watched the anime and manga. And so, with that really weird segment out of the way, they play the Rhinoceros Beetle arc where it shows off all the other side characters like the Shin Sengumi group and all the other side characters like Otae, Katsura, Elizabeth, all the other characters we see in the Benny Zakura arc and then they blend the end of that story perfectly to the beginning of the Benny Zakura arc which is where the main movie begins. Which actually conveniently works pretty well because there is only like a four or five chapter difference between the Rhinoceros Beetle story and the beginning of the Benny Zakura arc. See, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think that's fucking genius. Like the writers and directors of this live action adaptation clearly know their audience. And so they have no problem in manipulating the pacing of the movie because the audience already knows what kind of movie they're probably going to jump into. Because Gintama is such a parody, satirical, comedic series, doing these kinds of fourth wall breaking, self-aware cuts is actually very possible and not that weird to watch. If this was any other Shonen Jump live action series, there is no way that they can cut a movie like this. Unless it's... I don't know, a live action ball 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 movie, but who the fuck wants to watch that? I could barely sit through the anime adaptation of that, let alone a live action film. I ain't all about those real life nose hairs, my boy. But what a lot of people don't understand is actually how genius this cutting method is, because not only does it let you know what kind of characters are going to be in the Benny Zakura arc for those who have never seen or watched Gintama, but it also lets that audience that isn't that used to Gintama or possibly has no idea what Gintama is about, by cutting it this way and showing this kind of fourth wall breaking, satirical, sarcastic comedy, they know what to expect for the rest of the movie. Like they instantly know, okay, this is Gintoki, this is Shinpachi, this is Kagura, this is the Shinsengumi, these are all the side characters, and these are the roles that they play. You understand that instantly before you even jump into the main story arc of the movie. 
And they managed to do it all while being satirical, self-aware, and comedic, just like the original series. And concerning the actual Ben Yuzakura arc, like the main story arc of this movie, the writers and directors also managed to do this one thing that I have seen too many live-action anime adaptations fuck up completely. They didn't change the fucking story! I get that a lot of these live-action anime adaptations are created to appeal more to the mainstream audience that they're trying to bring into the fan base. So, I understand that they have to change the story due to time constraints, or cultural limitations, or medial limitations. Although, if you ask me, there was certainly no such excuses for other anime adaptations out there. But concerning the Ben Yuzakura arc in the Gintama live-action, they basically changed almost zero portions of the story. And only sprinkling what I saw were original jokes that you didn't see in the original series to kind of just spice it up a little bit, which I think worked just as well because it was just as self-aware and comedic as the original jokes in the original series. More live action anime directors and writers need to know this important rule. If it's not broken, don't try and fix it! The acting in this movie too, which I've seen be a recurring problem, especially with Japanese produced live action anime films, was, I thought, not that bad. In fact, I thought it was actually pretty good. Not gonna lie, it's not exactly the most fantastic acting I've seen ever, and is very Japanese-like. So all I'm gonna say is just don't expect, like, Hollywood levels of acting in this movie. Although, as we know from previous examples, that certainly didn't save the movie. One thing that Gintama fans know is a great part about the Gintama series is the ridiculous facial expressions and the movements that the characters pull off. And I think regardless of the limitations of the medium, a lot of the actors and actresses managed to pull off the looks pretty well. They nailed the characters down, their characteristics, their movements, the kind of jokes that those characters would say and be a part of. Everything was actually really well put together in my opinion. And here's the best part of it all. It was actually funny! And I'm not talking about like Terraformers live action anime adaptation levels of ironic funny. I'm talking about like, I genuinely was laughing at some of the jokes and the presentations of the actors and the directing and writing because I just thought it was funny. I know this might be blasphemous as an anti-tuber who has made countless videos on how much I dislike live action anime adaptations, but... I think they've actually done it. I think I've finally found a live action anime film that I can not only recommend to people, but I genuinely think is fucking awesome. I never would have thought that I would hear those strings of words in that order escape from my mouth onto the screen, but... I mean, hey, miracles do weird things to a man. And hey, if the same team decides to make a sequel to, say, another story arc in the Gintama franchise, because there are a lot of fantastic story arcs out there. Maybe if they make a live-action movie covering the Red Spider arc, because I thought that arc was also pretty fucking fantastic in terms of Gintama story arcs, then I honestly, as long as they don't change any of the actors, the writers, or the directors, I genuinely will be looking forward to that movie. Although, I'm not gonna lie, 3D CG Sadaharu was pretty fucking disturbing throughout the movie, so if you can just move your budget a little bit to the 3D CGI side of the development team, then uh, I think you'll be alright for the next movie. But I've always thought since then, why aren't there more live-action anime films like this? There have been so many live-action anime films, especially recently, and there have been so many that have been announced for 2018. Why is it that the Gintama live-action film managed to nail it, while all of these other series couldn't? Is it because of the comedy? The satire? Does it have to do with the people involved, like the actors, the writers, the directors? Or could it be that, much like any miracle, we just got lucky with this film? I'd love to do a separate video in the near future discussing on this overall topic even more, but in the meantime, let me know what you guys think. What are your opinions and all of that? And also, if you did watch the Gintama live action movie, what did you think about it? Did you think it was really fucking good, or did you think it was another failure like the rest of them? And if you haven't seen the Gintama live action film, then are you willing to go and check it out? And if you've never watched or read the Gintama series, then are you willing to go check that out instead? I'd love to know all your thoughts and opinions on it, so let me know all that kind of stuff 
in the comments below. And hey, if there's another series or movie or whatever that you'd like me to talk about in the near future, then the best place to do it is over on my Twitter. Tweet your suggestions at me, your articles, whatever you want me to actually make a video on. And also a special thank you to Arya Man Varma, Brenna Stahl, Fukano, Nicholas Roman. I created this for Joey and it's very long. And you're still here. F and X, Crescentia, Kobe Johnson, Uncle MIB, John and Hart, Iochi, Corey Williams, and everybody else on my Patreon who supports me every single month. We're doing a massive end of year giveaway right now for all of you Patreons out there and some more things planned and out for next year's Patreon. Next year's 2018 Patreon is going to be lit AF. So if you'd like to be a part of that and would like to support what I do, then the best place to do it on Patreon. Click that first link in the description below to support your boy. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, like your favorite if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more banner, and I'll see you guys next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime. Johnny!